Today, I'm joined by Richard Legutko. He is a Polish philosopher, uh, a politician, a current member of the European Parliament, and a professor of philosophy. Um, he specializes in ancient philosophy and political theory. Um, he is also the author of the excellent um, The Demon in Democracy, which has become um, a, a bit of a cult status book in, in some, some circles on, on the dissident right, especially people interested in um, in liberalism, you know, this podcast has been very, very uh, intense on that topic. Um, and he also has a more recent book uh, about a very important concept as well, uh, about freedom and, and what it means, uh, entitled The Cunning of Freedom, Saving the Self in an Age of False Idols. Welcome, Professor Legutko. Hello. Good to be here. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, The Demon and Democracy has become quite uh, an important book for a lot of people. It's it's gaining even more steam now. I mean, we're, a, a lot of people are discussing the concept that you developed in, in, in that book. Um, and I think your perspective is especially relevant because you have lived under a um, so-called illiberal regime. Not many people in the West have, um, and you kind of have both perspectives. You You've lived under communism um, and been a dissident under communism, which is an especially interesting situation. Um, and then you've also lived through um, transition, through freedom, <laughs> which is which is the current state apparently. Uh, and you've um, you've had the life experience to compare these two situations. So um, I wonder, you know, what what uh, similarities and dissimilarities have you enjoyed? Because I think that's that's one of the main points you make in, in the Demon and Democracy that there are certain similarities that are very very subtle, but also very important. Um, well, let, let, first let me say that it uh, has taken me quite a while uh, to come to that uh, conclusion and to put forward this thesis. It was rather painful to me, as you might uh, imagine. I mean, for several decades, I was living under the communist system, and the, the system collapsed, and we were so really happy and thrilled. Finally, we are free. And then, uh, you know, the, the new system was introduced, and, uh, okay, we were happy at the beginning. And then some things uh, uh, we found more and more annoying, but, uh, well, the world is not perfect, as we know. So everywhere there are certain things that uh, some people find annoying. So for, for quite some time, I, I kind of pushed off the, the idea that there might be some deeper affinity between the two uh, uh, systems. And uh, as, I, as I write in the, in the introduction of, of the book, uh, the uh, 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 the this I I can't say ep ep episode, but it's a process that I uh, discovered in the in liberal uh, democracy. Kind of stimulated uh, uh, me to uh, uh, to write a book. Was that I I discovered to my dismay that. Uh, People like myself, that is with uh, uh, rather conservative leaning uh, and having anti uh, communist past, uh, are marginalized in, uh, in a new uh, system. That is, uh, we kind of uh, half legitimate, uh, right? Half re re respectable. Whereas the former communists are right in the, in the middle of it. I mean, they have full legitimacy, they have full uh, respectability. And then the European Union, we enter the European Union. And, and again, the, the, the former communists were more than welcome. Uh, into the bosom of the European uh, Union, uh, whereas the Conservatives, uh, not so. Okay, if you are there, so be it, but we won't uh, let you have much uh, say in the business. So, so, so that was this uh, this process which uh, I I found decisive. I said to myself, okay, let's explore and. Uh, 
uh, uh, try to find out how it is, uh, why, why, why as, as they are. And, and then so I, I formulated uh, various uh, hypotheses. And uh, if you ask me the question, what are the similarities between the two systems, I will, I will just mention uh, one, which I, which I think it's, it's basic. Uh, that is, uh, if uh, uh, somebody who was living under the communist system knew that uh, there was the, uh, the the pressure and the desire uh, the, the gov- from the government and the communist party to make everything communist, to make everything political, uh, uh, there wasn't just uh, morality, but socialist uh, morality. There wasn't just art, but socialist art. Well, it changed later as the system was declining. But the, 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 the primary idea was this. Everything, everything has to be socialist or communist, right? Uh, family, education, uh, uh, even your, your mind, right, has to be uh, permeated with socialist ideas. And, and then uh, uh, having uh, lived for two decades uh, in liberal d- democracy, I came to the conclusion that the same tendency I can see here now, not only in Poland, but everywhere, wherever I go, and also in, in the European Union. Everything has to be liberal and dem- or democratic, or liberal and, and democratic. Morality, family, there is no, uh, there is no place of of, of refuge uh, under the communist regime. We were trying to defend our private lives, family life was was the was a place where you could feel safe. And uh, and, and as you know, uh, the the private nowadays in liberal democracy, the, the private as as private doesn't exist. Private is political. Right, uh, the relations between a man and a woman, a parent and a child. Uh, uh, these are uh, these are inherently political I- issues. Even the most intimate things in one's life become political. Well, sex is a good, good example. Right, sex is a, 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 a heavily political concept uh, uh, nowadays. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about toilets, but that's 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 the American contribution. I mean, making toilets a political issue, right? So, uh, uh, so yes, that's that, that's that's the thing. I mean, uh, everything is political. We put politics everywhere. Uh, you cannot even you cannot read books uh, because you uh, are made to discover. Uh, discrimination or inequality or racism or homophobia uh, in in the, in the movies the movies are not just uh, for fun but the movies are to indoctrinate you about discrimination or equality or, or things like that so there's one other reason I, I stopped going to the movies some time ago but that's besides the point. Oh, I can I can understand. I mean, any, anyone who has a Netflix subscription <laughs> and has you know, a bit more right wing inclinations uh, understands your point. There is a, a lot of um, there's a, there's a specific worldview that's being pushed on on everyone, and that's uh, promoted essentially as common sense. Now it's not it's not aware of itself. It doesn't know that it is liberal. It knows that it is common sense that people should think that way, and then uh, it's natural that it's presented that way. Yes, I mean, we're being formatted, and, uh, and it's so really deep down in our cells that, that people uh, cease to uh, understand how they've been formatted and how, how the mind uh, uh, has been uh, man- manipulated and uh, filled with all these uh, ideas. That's why it's very difficult to uh, to talk to people, to to argue. Uh, we, we imagined, at least I imagined, but a lot of my colleagues uh, did too, that uh, liberal democracy is a kind of uh, 
uh, debating society, that there are so many arguments uh, floating around, and it's a it's a it's a big, a bit noisy, perhaps chaotic. But uh, the, the the only problem is that, that there are, there are too many arguments, too many points of view. You might get confused, you might get lost. Nothing is further from the truth. I mean, there are a couple of uh, very simple ideas, very simple cliches that are being pumped into into our minds. Uh, so it's 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 extremely d- difficult to uh, to argue to enter into into the discussion. It's a uh, it's it's based on a very uh, simple uh, trick, uh, namely that. Uh, the general concepts. There are several general concepts which uh, uh, are considered to be uh, uh, ob- obvious, self-evident, right? Like uh, like discrimination or like uh, racism. Uh, so you do not really argue or discuss uh, a certain phenomenon, effect. Right or a process uh, or uh, a, a social tendency, but either you attack with the use of these concepts or you defend yourself. Uh, no, no, I'm not a racist. Right? What you said is a racist. No, well, I'm not a racist. No, no, I, no I, I, I'm far from it. I hate racism. So uh, you cannot really enter into a debate because uh, it, it, the, the public space resembles a minefield. There are so many crimes, thought crimes, that you might uh, commit. Uh, and there are more thought crimes now than there were other communists. I mean, all sorts of uh, uh, phobias, right? Uh, uh, transphobia, homophobia, uh, mi- mi- misogyny, se- sexism. I mean, the list is. I, 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 once I try to make a, a, a list of all the sins that you might uh, uh, com- commit, uh, the list is long, and still new items are being added. So uh, it's it's difficult really to talk because either you uh, uh, you you attack or, or you you defend yourself, and if you are if you are not attacked yet, you make a preemptive mood move and you try to attack someone else accusing this of that uh, thought crime, and and these are these few uh, seemingly self evident. Uh, uh, notions that is uh, uh, liberal democrats, right? Uh, uh, liberal democrat, uh, liberal democratic man is uh, is a rather thoughtless uh, person, being equipped with uh, a few general concepts. Uh, he believes that he understands uh, everything, and there is no need to explore and uh, make an, any intellectual. Effort. This, by the way, was uh, f- f- for the f- first time discovered by uh, Alexis de Tocqueville. I mean, for the first time it, it had to be discovered by Plato because everything had been discovered by Plato. But uh, <laughs> but that was a long time ago. I mean, when in his book uh, on uh, uh, democracy in America, uh, Tocqueville. Uh, he begins his book, I mean, one of the first chapters, is about the importance of general concepts in democracy. And that uh, people in, in democracy, that's what he said, are, are generally intellectually lazy, but they, but they like to understand the world around. So they, uh, they, they use these general concepts, uh, which, is, uh, which are given to them from outside, so to speak. Uh, it is not they them, them, themselves who produce uh, through induction, um, through experience, develop these general concepts. No, they are provided from outside and they use it as a very convenient tool to, uh, to understand the, uh, the, the world. And now if you have, uh, in, in our society, if you have uh, powerful ideological organizations or movements, they are the provider 
networks. They are the, the, the concept providers. So uh, anyone who wants to debate or, uh, or would like to exchange arguments uh, in a liberal uh, democracy is in a in the wrong place. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's uh, what I've seen happen now, uh, on especially on the right wing, that people are trying to go back to the basic concepts. People have, have realized that the, the the whole framing of reality is set by the left. Like you, you like you said, racist, not racist. Who's the racist? You're the real racist. You know, this is a losing battle because you've already accepted the frame of, you know, racism is the most important sin. This is the only thing we're going to discuss. And obviously the right wing will always be more racist because the left wing is completely insane in the opposite sure. direction. Um, and I think a lot of people are going back to to philosophy. Um, you know, you see people reading uh, the ancients. Plato is is back, <laughs> and uh, also um, you know people like like Michael Millerman. They you know they they delve into Leo Strauss. They delve into a, a tradition of of uh, anti liberalism or a critique of liberalism from the right, which has been completely neglected. Not even you know uh, has not been. It has been considered fascism. It's in the big box of fascism, and we just threw it threw it away. But thinkers like uh, Demestre, Carlyle, De Juvenel, they're all coming back, and people are very, very interested in in things. And, and in the in essence, a lot of these ideas can be seen are transparent also in in uh, the Demon and Democracy, because you're obviously someone who's who's not. Um, learned his philosophy just studying the 20th century. It's you know these these ideas are, are much more profound and much more have a have a pedigree that's not uh, that's not recent. So I think that's that's very important. And I think this is a very very good development because this is the only way that we're going to change the the premise of the of the discussion because you know the especially in, in America people have been arguing about who's the real racist for 50 years maybe more uh, and the, the right's always been losing on that on that category so um, I wonder if um, if from your perspective you've seen anything hopeful in that direction I know you're you're on the ground you're you're an active politician in the in the Euro, uh, in the European Union uh, and I, I wonder what you see from that perspective is anything changing in the in the EU right? The EU, uh, the EU is uh, is is an awful place. I mean, this is uh, absolutely uh, uh, hopeless. I mean, all all the all the things that we've been talking about uh, are, are there in great in, in intensity. Uh, in, in indoctrination, uh, ideology, all these. Uh, you know, uh, politically correct claptrap. Uh, everything is there, and and the, the artificial language, this new speak or euro speak, uh, which doesn't really serve to uh, to communicate, but uh, to uh, to in, to indoctrinate, uh, and also it's uh, it has a wrong structure. It's, it's very at least structured. I mean, the, the institutions. Uh, so I do not really uh, have much uh, uh, hope. I, I do not see any chance of a change for for the better. Um, <laughs> the only thing uh, that can happen is uh, some kind of uh, self uh, dis destruction. Uh, the, the, one of the problem is that. And that relates to what we were uh, talking about uh, a, a while ago, namely that the minds is the minds are unable to uh, grasp the to describe to give a diagnosis of of the situation because the the minds are formatted. Yeah, they they do not uh, accept any. Uh, stimuli from 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 outside. There is a kind of uh, fi fi uh, filter, right? The, the information is filtered. Uh, but uh, there, there are some movements, uh, uh, mostly uh, mostly uh, motivated by uh, traditional. Uh, Collective uh, emotions such as uh, uh, patriotism, right, or uh, or at attachment to one's culture or or, or tradition. 
Uh, it's not yet uh, in, in intellectually uh, uh, mature. Uh, it's, it's not a, a, a strategy that is being ready and to, to be made use of. But uh, you, you can see some movements in Europe, in, in European countries uh, uh, against this. Uh, what will come out of it, I, I do not know. My, my country is in a slightly better uh, situation because we still have uh, a lot of uh, mm, uh, tra traditional culture, uh, miraculously uh, uh, somehow exi existent, still existing after communism. I was thinking of some... Uh, point uh, in in the communist system that uh, it will all disappear, but uh, it, it didn't. It had some you know clandestine life and, and, and it uh, reemerged. Uh, so uh, we still have something of it, but uh, but we are de deeply divided because there is uh, quite a large group of of, of the poles who. Uh, who say no? We have to join the politically correct uh, mainstream, and we have to uh, destroy our I identity and, 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 and get rid of uh, Polish uh, the idea of Polish sovereignty and, and things like like these. Uh, um, uh, but uh, 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 yes, I, I'm not I'm not quite optimistic. Uh, uh, as to the uh, nearest future uh, in in Europe, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, but but we'll see. I mean, the the conservative movements do not uh, have uh, political power. I mean, Poland and Hungary, uh, perhaps uh, Slovenia, are few countries where uh, where the conservative movements have some. Uh, uh, power. I mean, uh, not not only in the sense of being being in the government, but also in the media. Right? If you go to France; it's very difficult to find to find a, a, a newspaper or a, a website uh, that is uh, conservative and that has some influence, uh, or, or or Germany, for, for that matter. In, in Germany, in Germany is, is a grand coalition that everyone everyone belongs to this grand coalition, including the, the socialists, the Christian Democrats, the media, uh, the Protestant churches, even the Catholic Church is a part of this grand coalition. So it's uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's something that uh, seems very or is very, I think, this disconcerting. Uh, so uh, our conservative friends from from Germany, or from France, from Italy, or from Spain uh, are envious when they uh, uh, yeah, when we talk about uh, Poland because they don't have it. It's, uh, they don't have the, the media. They don't they don't have the, the public space in which they can propagate their ideas and, and, and you know. Uh, somehow make people aware of, of, of the program. Uh, yes. Do you think that the, the role of the Catholic Church has had, had something to do with that in Poland? Is, is the church uh, an important factor for uh, the continued existence oh, yeah. of conservatism? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It's a, a cru crucial uh, a crucial role. Uh, in, in, the, in the communist uh, period, uh, the, the church was the only institution that's, that survived. Uh, uh, it was uh, savagely attacked, and uh, it, it was infiltrated. But uh, I mean, by by the communist uh, uh, agents, and the, the, the security uh, system. But uh, uh, but that that was about ten percent, the ninety percent of the priests. Behave very bravely and uh, and courageously, and, uh, and uh, yes, without the church, we uh, would have been uh, completely uh, different. Uh, uh, un unfortunately, the the, the church uh, that uh, had such a 
magnificent uh, 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 part in in, in uh, role in, in Polish uh, history, also in the communist system, recently has shown symptoms of uh, hmm, weakness. Uh, shall I say? I, I I would like to talk about about disease, but. Uh, Still, our, our church in Poland is quite uh, conservative, but 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 I can see uh, the disintegrating movements within the, the church. Uh, among, among the priests, among among lay lay people uh, who want to to make it liberal, just like uh, like in, in in Germany. And uh, to, to be frank, the the current pope uh, is not very helpful. In, in that respect, uh, because he is he's also supporting these uh, movements. He 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 was uh, he supportive of 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 what is happening in in the German uh, church, with which uh, uh, reminds of uh, reminds us of uh, of the Reformation. I mean uh, that is. Uh, uh, the, the, the church should be democratized, that it should emerge from the sort of grassroots, right? It, it, is, not the, uh, it is not the bishop, it is not the Vatican, right? It is the, the people who organize themselves into communities. It, it, it's fine, right? It was the Reformation. It didn't quite work. We know that. Why should we uh, repeat uh, the same uh, story? Uh, the, the church, the Catholic Church, uh, represented something else. It right? represented uh, tradition, doctrine, uh, hierarchy, stability, uh, and and that was its its strength. Now, why uh, uh, getting rid of it uh, now when it's so much needed? But that that, that should I, I I'm I write about this in my book on on, on democracy. How how. Uh, uh, the, the the effects of liberal uh, liberal democracy are more uh, pernicious than uh, are less, less brutal, of course, but somehow they are they are more efficient, right? More more effective. Uh, probably the reason being this uh, uh, this uh, efficiency in informing people's people. Minds, even the, the priests, even the priests do not want to find themselves at, at the mar- margin of history. They don't want to to find themselves outside the, the, the mainstream. Uh, so, though they are, you know, they are they are saying, uh, "We are with you." Of course, we are. We are also liberals. Uh, we love pluralism. And, 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 and all this, and, and they and they join they join this uh, hom- homogeneous uh, uh, movement. I mean, as I said, some of them, but it it requires courage to to defy the process. It's a different sort of courage uh, that, that under the communists, because because there are no uh, torture chambers. You will go to, to prison. If you go to prison, it's a rather lenient. Uh, 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 sentence, or you have to pay uh, a, a, a fine. Recently, uh, one of the Polish uh, priests, a professor of theology, was fined uh, 5,000 euro by a German court if, for the article he wrote in a German, in a German theological uh, uh, journal about uh, lavender mafia in in the Catholic uh, Church, so that was uh, considered to be uh, homophobia, and uh, and he was he was fined five thousand thousand euros. He he said he wouldn't pay, so we are just waiting if they will uh, uh, put him to prison uh, for <laughs> writing an article. But but that's not called. Uh, uh, censorship or repression it's called uh, fighting hate speech right of course it's very important what we call it <laughs> so um 
you've you've um, explored kind of the, the philosophical level of why these things are happening. Um, so we have essentially this egalitarian assumption at the core of both liberalism and communism, and also the assumption of progress. So everyone is equal, but also we have to every year we have to get more equal. We're 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 going at light speed towards the, the you know the fulfillment of socialism or slash liberal democracy, which means that everyone's getting more equal by the day. So this is kind of the, the philosophical fundament. Um, but I think there's something happening in the last, let's say, 30, 40 years that has been a, a development that historically is unprecedented. And it is the technological world around us has changed so much. Uh, and this kind of interacts with with the philosophy. So it makes these things faster or more widespread. Like you said, it's easier to format people uh, in, in this spirit. So I wonder, what, what do you think about the, the, the technological layer? I mean, it's, it's wonderful that we can speak you know, <laughs> this way, uh, but there's also a lot of other effects that, that technology has that, that play into liberalism uh, and, and how it spreads and how deeply it, it I don't know, permeates the soul Oh, yes. I mean, the technology may be wonderful. I mean, I remember the times where writing an article was really uh, so difficult, you know, getting rid of, uh, uh, getting hold of uh, uh, of uh, uh, some articles, like books, uh, uh, going to a library, the, the books were not there. Oh, it was so complicated. And now you don't just don't have to leave your uh, your study, right? You you are at the desk and you have everything, just like that. Everything you can write, access to all possible information. It's fabulous. I mean, it's it's a paradise for someone who wants to uh, use it for a good purpose. But uh, <laughs> but uh, well, uh, human. Uh, Nature is uh, corrupted. We are all sinners, uh, and there are there are temptations. And we often, uh, uh, more often than not, uh, give in the temptations. And uh, uh, and yes, uh, first uh, uh, technology, uh, technology. Uh, weakens uh, your, your 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 moral sense because uh, it it allows you to be u- unanimous unanimity right uh, usually when uh, when you voiced an opinion or you defended your position uh, uh, you had to why well, you you have to present yourself who you who you are right uh, your, your your name where you live what you are and now it, it's no longer I mean you, you uh, it's, it's no longer uh, you the, the, the case you are hidden behind all these names uh, so uh, it, uh, it it lowers the the, the, the level of uh, courage. Uh, uh, right, it it, uh, it it encourages uh, irresponsible behavior. You can you can say whatever you want. You, you use foul language, right? You insult people. Uh, why can't you? I mean, nobody will know uh, what, what you what you do. Then uh, it 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 changes the the, the language. Uh, it's not it's not true that. Uh, it, that technology led to the mm, uh, ennobling of, of, of the language or to uh, raising the standards of language, far from it. This egalitarian uh, tendency, which you mentioned, is also visible in the, in the, in the effect of the, of the, of the uh, computer language, right, or social media language, or the language we, we use uh, even when we talk to each, each other. Uh, in, the, in the in the regular media, in art, uh, in schools, in, in in families, and 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 then the, uh, there is also the, the problem which we already touched upon, namely that uh, you do not uh, see or you are not aware, you do not realize to what degree you are, are manipulated by the by the by the power 
supposed to be the big tech uh, guys. They have they they have their, their agenda and they they determine uh, uh, what you think, not only how you speak, but also what you what you say and, and, and what you think. So so it's uh, it, it's a very dangerous place. So, uh, yes, uh, more and more people are being uh, becoming aware of it. It's it's, it's been talked talked about, but uh, I I don't think it changed much. That that's that's the problem. We uh, we are aware of it, and yet we are more and more into it. it it's it's difficult to 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 liberate yourself. Uh, from from the system, you're becoming a, a part of the system, a victim even of, of the system. It's a, and you say to say yes, I know, I'm a victim of the system. I'm being formatted, I'm being controlled. But sorry, I can't help it. I, I have to be there in all these social media. I cannot live without them. What would my life be like? It would be not worth living without. Uh, uh, Facebook or Twitter or other. Exactly. I mean, these are these are comforts, and um, in a in a way, if if one were to imagine the state of nature, um, you wouldn't necessarily have all of these. It would be impossible to have all of these liberal epiphenomena. Feminism would not exist in in the state of nature. Um, any anything that does not have the intermediation of technology of of technological progress of even the industrial revolution would not all of these ideas would be impossible so this is obviously you know an outgrowth of um of technology as well um because you know at a point where people need each other a family needs each other um uh, people wouldn't be so sensitive to this these products this this kind of intermediation that you see everywhere oh yes absolutely it's a, it's a very important point uh, uh, very important point. Uh, that is, we uh, we uh, uh, because of technology, we uh, uh, we lost the, the the sense of the seriousness of of, of life. That is, our life has become uh, easy. I I, think, I remember reading it was Ortega y Gasset's right the book, the the revolt of, of the masses. And, and he said, but in, even in the in the in the nineteenth century, the, 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 the people uh, uh, the, the people were living in the awareness that uh, your their lives may terminate any minute. I mean, disease, uh, uh, war, all kinds of uh, upheavals, right? Uh, violence, and. Uh, and then there was this technological pro 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 progress, right? Uh, we feel uh, secure. There is longer, longer life expectancy, right? We are we are not afraid of, of, of diseases, um, uh, and and we became spoiled by it, right? In in, in instead of. Uh, uh, treating this as an opportunity to pursue nobler goals, as uh, uh, philosophers in the past believed that uh, in, a, in a situation of certain comfort and security, people uh, not having to uh, work uh, 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 too much to survive, they would uh, devote their life to noble ideas like uh, music or poetry or, or mathematics or, or watching the beauty of nature. Uh, no, not, not much of it. Uh, instead, uh, we have uh, uh, cra crazy... In insane political movements, uh, uh, which may destabilize destabilize uh, everything and, and ruin uh, our uh, our nature and, and ruin the, uh, the, the 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 foundations of of, of human existence, right? By by, by this destroying. Uh, uh, destroying family, right? Des destroying uh, our minds and, 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 and all this. So yes, there is uh, te te technology. Uh, technology uh, put uh, a fence, sort of, between uh, between us and, and 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 nature when we feel 
uh, we feel secure and we we think we can do anything right uh, uh, because because we can right we can uh, uh, we can uh, change nature right uh, we can I mean anything we can think of, it can be, it can be done. So yes, it's uh, it it's, it's it turns out very very d- d- destructive. Uh, it was it, it could be it could be anticipated, but uh, but those who anticipated it thought that uh, the self and awareness would make people conscious of it, right? Oh, sorry, make people cautious. Right. But we we are not cautious. I mean, quite a few of us are, but uh, but the the atmosphere is not that of caution. It's rather, right, go ahead, more of the same. Yeah. Yes, it's uh it's turned into a very kind of spiritual quest as well. This this comfort uh, we could see this with uh, with the pandemic, the recent pandemic, that's which just threw the whole world into a, a frenzy of of denying even the possibility of death. First, it was two weeks to stop the spread, and 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 then at, at this point, we are at the point where lockdowns have become a a common phenomenon um even even the possibility of death is something that very few politicians want to have any anything to do with so the the entire managerial apparatus of the world that's that's kind of churning in the background is now mostly concerned with um I don't know, covering covering themselves from the possibility of of being tainted with death in any way. Uh, so that's it. It does seem to be that like this is a, a very important part of the progressive cult that that we're we're under now. That the idea that you know. Um, we we want to split from nature so so violently that that we split from death itself. And I, what I wanted to add to this is that there is a a, a movement now that ties into technology, which is very is gaining steam. Uh, it's kind of this this transhumanist idea. You can see this with Facebook releasing this metaverse idea where you can just you know you you're essentially a dualistic person where your body is is faulty just leave it on earth and you can transcend just upload your your mind um to to the metaverse and then you can you can live the egalitarian fantasy uh in the computer not you know on the internet not in in terrible uh you know reality uh and there's no no covid on the internet you know you can close your door and there's no no diseases can come in death cannot cannot get you if you're if you're in the metaverse well, I, I, that's a new uh, information. I, uh, but I, I'm not following these uh, things. But uh, uh, yes, I think uh, the, the modern uh, the modern man has a problem with with, with death, right? Uh, the, the death, the, the death doesn't exist, uh, mostly because we we are in, more and more in individuals. Right, so we we do not see uh, we do, we do not see how uh, how 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 we are born. I mean, we were not we don't remember how we were born, and uh, and uh, as long as we live, we are not we are not dead. And uh, since human uh, uh, life uh, is 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 individual, we uh, we do not uh, have any. Sense of of, uh, of 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 loss because we our perspective is that of of one uh, of, of of one life right not not uh, a continuation through through generations right we do not live with with our parents or with our children or, or grandchildren I mean everybody is uh, is uh, separated and and if you if you are old. And alone, you uh, wind up in a uh, in a home, right? Uh, and then your children will uh, uh, receive a call one day that uh, you are no longer among the living. So, uh, uh, so th- this really doesn't uh, exist, and uh, and the world around you is uh, uh, is is colorful, is, is joyful. Everybody seems to be happy. Of course, there is this somber aspect of human existence, which occasionally comes out in in uh, in, in books, right, in literature, in, in movies, in, in theatre. But uh, but uh, your everyday perspective is that everything is uh, 
is 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 colorful and uh, and it's something uh, ha- happens like uh, the pandemic that it shouldn't happen, right? In the first place, it shouldn't happen. Then you you, you deny it's happening, and uh, and then you think it's it's not serious. And then you will indulge in, in certain uh, f- f- fantasies that uh, if, if, if you do not take death uh, seriously, then, uh, uh, then uh, the, the result is not despair, uh, not necessarily despair, although perhaps deep down there might be uh, some despair, but the result is... Uh, uh, is, is is fantasy, right? It's uh, uh, like uh, was was it the Chesterton who said, uh, uh, "If you do not believe in God, it's not that you do not believe uh, uh, in 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 nothing. You are apt to believe in anything." Uh, so we we are kind of li- li- live in in a world with very many people. Uh, are inclined to believe in anything, provided it is uh, given in a, a attractive and uh, alluring right? so, way. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, there's um, um, related to to your mo- most recent book, the the cunning of freedom. I wanted to discuss uh, with you. Um, the idea of, of the free of freedom, but also kind of w- the concept of the individual, because this is kind of the the the, the primary level of abstraction that that liberal democracy deals with. You know, there's the individual; they are a rational agent. Uh, they make free choices, uh, and this is you know this is the the most important agent that that we we interact with, and he is also the political agent and also the market agent. You know, every sort of important relationship. Uh, is had with the individual to the detriment of any other level of abstraction. Um, and for me, this was an, an important um, perspective that I, I was missing. The fact that, you know, there are other levels of abstraction and for a, a healthy society, um, you cannot just focus on, on, on this one way of viewing people. Uh, so I wonder from, from that context, um, if, if you is, is a society of, of rational agents uh, optimizing their individual experiences um, the most free society? No, it isn't. And uh, I, uh, my, my problem with liberalism, and I, I'm not talking only about uh, liberal society or or some sort of pop liberalism. I'm I'm talking about the philosophical liberalism, the founding fathers of liberalism, like uh, like Hobbes and, and, and Locke and, and John Stuart Mill and, and others. Uh, my 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 problem with their uh, theory is uh, they talk about uh, a free society. Uh, but they do not talk about a free man, and they do not really understand uh, what a what a free man or a free pe- person is. And this free society turns out to be, at, at the end of the day, not quite a free society. That is, if you imagine that. Uh, 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 that uh, society should be organized in a certain way that every human person has an equal uh, area of freedom, e- 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 equal free space, then in order to achieve this, you have to uh, 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 have a, 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 a powerful, thorough uh, so, social engineering. I mean, you have to restructure the society because real societies are not like that, right? They are different. Then, first, you have to have free uh, individuals, right? That means you you have to uh, uh, you have to undermine family and all sorts of communities. They are in the way, 
Right? So the liberals did not like uh, small communities, they didn't like vi villages, and they were too backward of people keeping together, right? It, it's not it's not like that. Uh, so so f first you, you have to have the right in individuals, uh, which again requires powerful social engineering. And uh, and then you you have to see to it that everybody has an equal space or e equal share. So in in order to have to, to achieve that, uh, you have to take uh, a, a lot of from people who have too much or institutions have too much, and give it to those who you think have too little, and then. It, Again, it's a restructuring of, of, of the society. Uh, so, so my point is that liberalism, uh, the view of society of uh, in liberalism is not of a free society, and liberalism is not about free society. Liberals, liberalism is about social engineering, right? About a great social. Uh, and, and political e experiment. That's why the liberals usually start with the, the state of nature hypothesis. It was in, in, in Locke, in, in, in Hume, but it's also in, in John Rawls uh, uh, to, uh, to, to a degree. Okay? It's, it's a slightly different language, but it amounts to that. That is every uh, institutions, community, anything that you see is uh, is uh, sort of uh, uh, bracketed, right? It's it's uh, suspended until it is given right by the liberals to exist, and uh, in in the area which are allocated to them by the, by the liberals, they are uh, they are like like engineers, right? like uh, conductors. They, they are telling you this you might have, this you cannot have, that this guy shouldn't be here, right? That community shouldn't be there. So it's, it's, it, they're so busy, busy body, right? Trying to organize everything uh, in, 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 the, in the social life. So liberal society cannot be free. It, free in the sense live and let live, right? It's 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 always about uh, changing, reforming, right, recycling. Uh, it's 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 about uh, uh, well, usually about contracts, and these contracts are supervised uh, and, and 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 negotiated. So so this is. Uh, 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 a, a liberal society, but but there is one problem. Another problem is, is a free person. Now. Who is or what is a, a free person? And I, I, I address this point in in my book and give various uh, answers or, or discuss various answers given given in the, in the history of uh, philosophy. But um, my uh, uh, main point of reference is Aristotle and uh, his concept of uh, a free person in contrast to a slave. And in the beginning of Aristotle politics, you have the distinction between the master and the slave. Uh, of course, nowadays it's politically uh, in, in, incorrect. I mean, it's... Uh, extremely dangerous to talk about uh, slaves, master and slaves, but uh, in, in Aristotle, the distinction wasn't really social, that this is the class of masters and this is the class of, of slaves. No, this, is, this distinction was anthropological. And uh, if you look uh, uh, from that point of view at modern society, it may turn out that, uh, I don't know, 70 or 80% of uh, our population in the Western world are slaves uh, in the Aristotelian uh, sense of the world. Uh, it's not only that you uh, make your own decisions, uh, but uh, it's that you are uh, mature enough to know which decisions are good, which are uh, uh, 
beneficial right to human existence which enable you to to fl- to flourish right so a, a, a person who said uh, a, a woman who says I, I want to be a, a, a prostitute because it's it's my free de- de- decision I need money and I want to be a, a, a prostitute uh, because I'm a I'm a free free woman would not be a free woman in an, an Aristotelian uh, sense. Uh, so it 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 requires a, a, it, it's a very demanding. Uh, it's it's not uh, it's not authoritarian that, that that you impose yourself on on other people. It's very demanding for yourself. Uh, to to be a, a, a free man, you have to you have to develop certain skills, uh, right? Which the the Greeks called virtues. You have to develop certain skills in order to uh, uh, to make full use of your uh, freedom, right? You have to have uh, uh, right courage, uh, uh, moderation. Uh, what the Greek called so, so, so frozina, uh, wisdom, and there were other virtues like piety. Uh, so these are things that you need to be uh, uh, a, a free man, right? A, a, a free uh, person, uh, or you, at least you try to be. Right? Your 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 life should be uh, directed in that way. If not, if you don't do it, you you give up or you stop doing it, or you're not interested, then you will become a slave. It will be made use of by, by other people. Um, so, uh, yes, it's, this is a, 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 big, uh, a, a big problem to be a free man, especially in today's society or mass society, which Ortega... Mm, Iga said, was writing uh, his book, uh, is is full of people uh, who you would really hesitate to call free. You, 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 even if you look at them, the, the way they, they move, the way they talk, uh, the, the ideas they, they, they express, the way they dress, uh, nothing is their own. I mean, everything is... Uh, Giving them from 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 outside, uh, and 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 as you quite rightly said at the beginning, they are not even aware of, of how how, uh, uh, how how enslaved uh, they they are, and uh, no no matter how extravagantly you, you, you dress or whatever you do with your face, your makeup, uh, uh, you may be uh, uh, tattooed all, all over your body, right? Doesn't make you free and independent. On the contrary, right? You are you are you you, you are one of the herd, right? Yes, it seems it seems to me that almost in a, in a paradoxical way, uh, liberalism also destroys the, the the options that a lot of people had, especially people who didn't have, you know, are not inclined to be seekers, to be to explore ancient philosophy, to discover these things on, on their own. Uh, and, and a lot of these parameters were encoded in, in traditional norms, which liberalism has, one, one purpose of liberalism is to dismantle these things and then let, leave all of these options up to the rational individual to choose if they want to adopt a traditional norm. Um, but the problem is that these traditional norms were essentially a commons that has been has been destroyed has been has been you know the the idea of destigmatizing every type of behavior um you know sounds wonderful on the face of it because it does liberate you in some in one way but it also takes away that model it takes away that idol that people should strive towards like for example um i know monogamy or a traditional type of marriage which is um is pro social in, in so many ways but now that's taken off the pedestal we we can have all sorts of arrangements all sorts of sexual relations uh and the the strain or the more uncommon they are in terms of traditional uh arrangements the better because you are therefore more free because you you you've rejected the um the, the the guardrails that society used to have for you but it seems that like you said a, a lot of people 
um, have pulled the short straw on this because there's a lot more social dysfunction. People are very clearly not happier than they used to be in terms of these social relations. Um, so uh, I, I, I wonder what what is, is there to be done to, to reconstruct this? Is there any way... You know, can people actually choose these things in 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 the vacuum? Well, that, that's of course the, the, the most difficult question, right? So, uh, uh, but uh, but 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 you're right. I mean, if you if you want to talk about plurality, the plurality is always the plurality of. Uh, uh, something that is socially Im- embedded, like 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 norms, uh, uh, habits, uh, like customs, uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 world the world uh, uh, before modernity or before really the modernity took its toll. Uh, was more pluralist uh, because there were more uh, social variety or cultural variety. There were all sorts of traditions. And as, uh, again, one of the philosophers, I can't remember which one, said people at at that time, uh, before 20th century, shall we say, people uh, generally did not have... uh, uh, did not have opinions, right? They had uh, they, they they had habits. They had uh, uh, sayings. They had p- p- proverbs. That had uh, customs. They didn't have op- op- opinions. Now opinions uh, came later, when people lost all these uh, this t- traditional uh, heritage which they had, or, the, or they, uh, they 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 put it aside. And now they, they have opinions, and it turns out that uh, there are not really many opinions, because practically in the world, without this uh, uh, richness of social heritage, there's only one opinion, right? And one set of opinion, one set of opinions. If you talk to uh, 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 well, uh, uh, people who believe in uh, uh, same-sex marriage or who uh, who uh, fight for, po- for pol- polyamoria, right, or polyandria, or, uh, uh, or whatever, uh, right, all sorts of extravagant uh, combinations, you are not faced with a variety of views. It's just one opinion, right? And that's a paradox in, 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 in the modern world. That is, we, we all talked about plurality, pluralism, d- diversity, and the people who talk about it are really indistinguishable. I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's one view, rather simple or simplistic, which is called for the reason uh, uh, d- 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 hard to understand, which is called uh, pluralism. It's 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 anything but 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 pluralism. That's my uh, uh, if I can uh, uh, make a, 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 a short digression in in the European Parliament. But in the European Parliament, uh, there are about seven hundred parliamentarians. Uh, and 80%, uh, uh, this is this large coalition, uh, the, the mainstream parties, they have the same view almost on, on everything. And of course, they call themselves pluralists. And there's 20% of deputies who have different points of view. And 20% of parliamentarians are being... Uh, uh, you know, b- b- bullied, uh, humiliated, uh, excluded from all sorts of bodies, and and everything in the name of diversity and plurality. So when uh, when this mainstream uh, will have finally hundred percent of the European Parliament, and everybody will have the same opinion, that will be the triumph of pluralism and diversity. <laughs> Okay, this this is the, that type of thinking. Now, what what is to be done? You know, that's a, that's an old uh, uh, question. Uh, uh, in 
in this part of Europe where I come from, it is being associated with Lenin, because Len Lenin, you know, the, the guy who uh, organized the communist revolution in Russia, he wrote an article called Stodiovat. What is what is to be done? So whenever whoever asks the question, what is to be done? We always ah, that's Lenin's question. Okay, that's Lenin, Lenin's question. Very important Lenin's uh, important uh, question. Uh, well, uh, well, I think uh, it's it's not just one strategy, no one simple remedy. Uh, we have to start with uh, what, what you uh, rightly pointed out earlier on, uh, namely the, the language. We cannot use we cannot use the, 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 the language. So uh, we we have to we have to show uh, uh, as, as many people as possible that that the, the, the emperor has no clothes. I mean, that the, the, these pluralists are not pluralists. That, I mean that they are. Uh, they are. They are. Uh, they want the, the, the monopoly, right? That's a, that's a kind of despotism that they want to impose. So you have to start with with the, the, the language, uh, right? Uh, and uh, and we. It, it it shouldn't be a, a liberal language. I mean, you you you. you it's not that, that you join them. If you can't beat them, join them. I mean, that's a, that's an old saying. But this time, I think it 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 won't work. And uh, you you have to present a clear alternative. That's why I'm worried about what's going on in, in the Catholic Church. The, the Catholic Church was an alternative, right? It, it, it presented alternative thinking. Not uh, we did not want uh, the, the the church to be uh, a, a liberal. Church, because liberalism is uh, propounded by liberals. The liberal, liberalism has its uh, champions, its advocates, there is its political parties, its institution. Why should we? Why should the church join the the, uh, the, the liberals? So we we should we should we should fight for the uh, institutions and defend those institutions which are essentially by their nature non non. Uh, non-liberal, like the churches, or particularly the Catholic Church. Uh, family, uh, education, right? Uh, culture is, is, is also... So, so, so I believe that, the, uh, uh, that the, these are the, the areas where we should uh, present our case very strongly and no, 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 no compromise. But being a politician, I, I also uh, I also believe that uh, political uh, space is uh, extremely important. Uh, I disagree with a lot of my conservative colleagues who are saying, "No, no, not the government, uh, not the government. Uh, it's a civil society uh, that uh, should do the job." Well, I greatly respect the civil society, but uh, it's not enough. I think this anti-American, this is the American uh, point of view, this anti-government uh, uh, idea. No government, because the, 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 govern, the government is not uh, the solution, the government is the problem. That was, I think, Ronald Reagan who, who said that, uh, conservative as he was. But that's American point of view. Uh, whether it's true in the United States or not, I, I just don't know. I'm not knowledgeable enough to enter into American uh, problems. But I know that in, in Europe, uh, government uh, has a lot to do. So whenever you uh, th th there is a conservative government, it should behave in a conservative way. Unfortunately, in Western Europe, it hasn't been uh, uh, it hasn't been happening. We had uh, twice at least we had uh, conservative governments uh, in Spain, and uh, and uh, either they were intimidated or or simply. They didn't have enough courage. They didn't roll back the, the, the leftist uh, reforms, and they didn't conduct a conservative uh, policy. So that was uh, that was an example of, of of cowardice. 
The left-wing government do not have these, these problems. The, the left-wing governments, with full force, all the resources they have, they, they want to change this, this society. So whenever there's conservative government, it should act resolutely, uh, uh, seriously, because the, the matter is, uh, is serious. Whether we will have conservative governments uh, in Western Europe, well, that remains to be seen. Probably in, in Italy, but that we that we do not know, maybe in Spain, but, well, that, that we do not know. But but that, that would certainly be uh, helpful. I mean, the, the civil society, the, the civil, uh, the, 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 the grassroots movements, important as they are, and they are very important, uh, they will not uh, change the, 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 the course of uh, European uh, history and, and, and European politics. It so has some, some more powerful guys had to uh, participate, pr- primarily the, the governments. Yeah, this this is a um, a, a very active and very um, engaging discussion that's happening, has, has been happening in the last few years on the dissident right, including on the American dissident right. Um, the idea of, you know, can Reagan Reaganist fusionism still continue the idea that you know we can uh, the, the don't tread on me type uh, part of, of conservatism um, and I think the inclusion is is slowly drifting towards what you've said before is is that um, uh, the state is an epiphenomenon of of what what the culture is and also what you know what the people believe uh, and and at the moment it is pretty clear that there cannot be two regimes. Because um, essentially, that's that's what you have when you when you have a liberal uh, establishment, everything is liberal, and then you bring in a conservative government. It, that that's kind of an an opposite regime. So they will have to govern with, uh, you know, a liberal bureaucracy, liberal teachers in the schools, liberal everything from the top down, because that is the regime. So there's not going to be. And I think this the study of of power. I, I don't know if you've encountered the work of uh, of Curtis Yarvin. Um, he's been someone who's kind of brought in a, a lot of the these elements of of looking, you know, beyond politics, but understanding looking beyond politics to the to the nature of power itself like he's uh, he's brought into current fashion the works of James Burnham of Machiavelli Mosca you know the juvenile all of these people are being studied now because he had a very successful blog and, and people were were reading him on on the sly and it was really interesting um so name again sorry uh, Curtis Yarvin he he used to blog under a pseudonym his name was Mencius Moldbug Back in the day when people were reading him, and then but he came out a few years, um, I think a few years ago, and presented himself as his his actual name, um, and uh, I think he's brought a lot of people around to to your conclusion that politics is very important, but also to the conclusion that it's going to be very hard to do politics as a conservative under liberal hegemony because there, like I said, there there is no bipolar regime. There is only one regime, and and that's kind of the the law of the land. Um, so that he's he's been on this podcast as well. If you want to have a look, he's uh, he's quite. Well, an- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, that, that's that's a uh, that's you know, I think op- optimistic that uh, that uh, pe- people in the states are slowly going away from this uh, notion. At, at least some of them. From this notion that uh, the government is the problem. Of course, every every governing body creates its own pro- problems, uh, including the, the federal government or state government or, or any other government. But uh, uh, but yes, there, there there is a there is a problem with uh, with the liberal uh, re- regime. The liberal regime does not tolerate any other. Uh, regime, uh, uh, contrary to what people might imagine, that liberalism is uh, uh, very friendly and uh, and hospitable. No, uh, liberalism is, is is neither friendly nor nor hospitable. Uh, so I think it, the, the conservatives are more friendly, and hospitable because they tolerate uh, uh, liberal in, institutions. Uh, 
but uh, yes, they, they should strengthen this uh, political political arm, and uh, other, otherwise uh, we might uh, go deeper and deeper into uh, what looks like uh, this the specter of uh, of a new uh, despotism of, of of the kind that. Uh, uh, Alexis de Tocqueville predicted at the end of his democracy in America uh, when he said that he he said I do not have the name for it but it's uh, uh, it's it's a regime you know, despotism bienveillant et doux right uh, despotism that is benevolent and uh, mild well uh, so. Uh, so yes, we need uh, this this political uh, arm. Uh, whether that will happen in Europe, uh, uh, that remains to be seen. In Europe, we have the problem with the international institutions. Uh, uh, it's, it's not only the European Union, uh, the other international institution, Council of Europe, uh, for instance. It's it's it, it has its own uh, its own uh, European Court. Uh, there are several European courts uh, in Europe, uh, and uh, and they are more and more active, more and more aggressive. Uh, and of course, they 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 enlarge their competences. Uh, uh, every institution that is not checked will try to uh, enlarge its competences. That's what that's what uh, they be doing. So strangely enough, uh, in France, France is before presidential elections, as you know, and uh, some of the uh, politicians, some of the candidates from the uh, from the from the centre, are, are talking about uh, uh, liberating France from the control of, of European courts. Uh, but well, we, we will see if uh, if uh, these can some one of these candidates will win the elections. It, 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 should this happen, that would be a, a, a good uh, a symptom. France is a is a very important country in Europe. If they, they decide to, to to put a stop to uh, to this uh, gr- growing in influence of European. Uh, Pan, uh, supranational bureaucracy uh, that that would uh, that that would be uh, good and uh, provide uh, I think ammunition for other institutions and, and other governments. Yes, I'm I'm hopeful as well that um, a, a lot of changes that actually happen in, in the U.S. tend to tend to trickle down to Europe in in certain ways, and at least as a as a, an inspiration. And hopefully, they will happen in the U.S. Um, there there is the the recent case of um, of almost like a, a one man army of a guy called Christopher Rufo who took it upon himself to um, to bring to the courts the issue of uh, critical race theory that's been taught in schools, which is this this. You you know, umbrella term for essentially kind of this this, this anti-white, very divisive rhetoric that that's being pushed. You know that you know the, the white man is a colonist, and you know he's been oppressing all of these, and also you know trying to get uh, to get children to be um, man, children from ki- kindergarten on to to high school to uh, have this kind of racial hierarchy within the school, and you know participate in all of these uh, rituals of of self abnegation, and it, it's it's what what he's done is actually uncover all of the things that were taught in school and present them to the parents, which led to outrage, because obviously a lot of these things are, are very, you know, outrage worthy, because <laughs> they're, they're very aggressively pushing these ideas. Uh, and he's managed in, in quite a lot of um, states to outlaw the, um, the uh, teaching of, of, these, uh, of these ideas. How this is going to work in a practical term, how they will enforce it, how liberal teachers will will react to to this in the actual classroom is not clear yet. But the law, uh, the laws are on the books for a lot of these uh, a lot of these regions. I think in the south quite a lot, and and quite e- even in yeah. So in, in places you wouldn't expect this, this has gone through uh, and is now um, the law of the land. So it's uh, it's very hopeful, interesting. It's it's kind of a localist approach, but we'll see. It might come to Europe as well. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, I think it, it illustrates two interesting things. First, uh, 
that uh, the, the, the the corruption of the language. I mean, critical race theory. It, it, I mean, no, no criticism. It's it's dogmatic, right? It's, it's a dogmatic uh, theory. So the, the, the word critical or criticism or critique do not mean what they should mean. I mean they, 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 the, the language is completely uh, corrupted, and, and and that should be changed. Uh, uh, should be debunked and, 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 and uh, exposed to uh, to people. And, and second, how quickly uh, the, 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 the liberals or the radicals manage to introduce it in, in, into schools. I mean, critical race theory is, is a fairly recent, right, uh, phenomenon. And, and it and it found its way to schools, right? As you say, even kindergarten. I mean, amazing how 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 brutally they 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 act and uh, how quick they are with their uh, interference, with in, in, in intrusion in, into people's lives. So we have to learn. Learn something from them. At least uh, the, the 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 quickness of of, of action. Uh, yes, this is progress, but not the corruption of language. No, not the corruption of language. Exactly. Yeah. This is this is this progress. Progress moves very fast in in the twenty first century. Um, before I let you go, because I know we're coming up on time, um, I want to ask you the question that I ask everyone who who comes on the show: Is uh, is there a thinker? Um, you know, usually I ask if there's a subversive thinker. Uh, subversive usually means you know a, a bad thing, but given the the current times, I think it's uh, it's kind of morphed into a, a, an interesting thing um, that you would recommend that people read more of, or that you know is underrated by your estimation? Well, I, I, I read a lot of interesting books, interesting uh, 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 writers. Uh, recently, I, uh, I, I, I read a book by the, the, the person who I think is, uh, is, is in a way underrated in, in, the, in the States and, and elsewhere, and he should be read uh, um, um, more, so you should have more, uh, more readers. The, the name is not unknown, but I, I don't think it's sufficiently uh, known. He's not a young man, he's an octogenarian, as far as uh, I know. It's called uh, Paul Gottfried. Uh, as I said, it's not an un unknown name, but it's not really one of the, I think, the big, big, big names. The book I read was The Strange Death of Marxism, which uh, I found extremely re revealing because it uh, it changes the, the, the view uh, that, that I had that uh, uh, that uh, what we have been witnessing in the Western world and also in, in America, this wave of, of radicalism and political uh, correctness and uh, identity politics and, and what, what has been uh, uh, usually called neo-Marxism did not really come from 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 Marxism. Right? So it wasn't the German connection, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an American product. A, a very good book and very well argued. Uh, he's, a, he's a man of, of immense uh, uh, knowledge, and since his views are of a very conservative, probably he 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 is not uh, he is not talked about uh, as uh, as 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 much as as he uh, should be. Uh, uh, there there is a, a a German verb totschweigen, which means to 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 silence someone to death, right? Uh, but not to talk about. <laughs> Someone uh, who's worth uh, reading and uh, a, a, a good man and a, and a wise man. 
Yeah, that's that's interesting. We haven't gotten this uh, um, reply yet. I've uh, I've heard of, of Paul Godfrey, but I haven't read any of his uh, books yet. So this is a very good addition to the the, the building list of, of of good dissident thought that uh, that we're constructing here. Um, so that that concludes our our interview. I am I'm very very happy to have had you on. It's it's been a privilege to speak to you. Um, I appreciate all of the work you you've done up to this point, and all the your, the work that you're doing currently and all the work you're probably going to do in future as well. Um, and I, I recommend that people read um, at least The Demon in Democracy, but also your most current book that I'm reading right now as well, The, the Cunning of Freedom, um, because there there's very um, much insight, very much wisdom in these books. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. I'm delighted to be on the show. Yes. 